Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it's your first time. I'm Jada, founder of Unbound Creation. If you watched my video last week, then you know I've been stuck in a vicious cycle of fear. And it wasn't until someone told me that I was that the only thing to fear was fear itself, that I let myself recognize it and try to process it. At the end of the video, I promised you guys that I would talk more about surrender, what it means to me, and give you guys a few tips about how to implement it in this week's video. But ever since publishing the video, a few really exciting opportunities have come my way. And so I've been left with less time to try to figure out what to talk about in that video. However, since I am committed to posting every week, I decided to that it would be a good compromise to do a, a more techie video because I am def definitely a tinker and I like troubleshooting and problem solving, but I definitely recognize that not everyone likes to do the same and it can actually be really frustrating for some people. But since it's an inevitable part of uh, having a business and being an entrepreneur, especially if you're going into business yourself, I thought I've been wanting to do these videos because I think it could pro provide a lot of value to you guys and it's something I enjoy already. So this week I thought I would show you guys how to record your canvas while you're either animating or doing digital art without also including all the different distracting motions and movements of panning and zooming out and zooming in and rotating and whatever else you have to do so that you can then take that recording of your canvas and convert it into a time lapse, for example, or whatever else you would want to do with it. And so I'm really excited to be able to share with this with you guys because as far as I know, according to my research, no one else really does this process exactly the way I'm about to show you guys. So um, yeah, I'm really stoked that I was able to figure it out and that I'm able to share it with you guys. And let me know if you guys like it in the comments below and I'll definitely make sure to make more of these videos in the future. All right, but on to the actual part of this video where I show you guys how to record your canvas. Okay, so the first thing you guys wanna do is head over to Krita. It's the program I use to do animations and digital art. And the best part about it is that it's free. So let's head on over there. I already have a project open to save time. And I'll show you guys the, my first idea that I had was to use this overview window and to record that overview window for the time lapse. If you don't already have it, you can go to settings, dockers, and then go to the overview docker and check that little box right next to overview and it'll pop up. But since I have it here already, I'll show you guys that the nice thing about it is that you can actually pop it out into, into its own separate window, which you can drag around to wherever you want and you can resize. So I'll leave it there just for now. And I'll show you guys what the issue with this first idea that I had. So let's say I'm drawing, I'll write my name. And you'll see that even though I'm writing, there's nothing popping up there, unless I stop for about two seconds or so, and then it's updated all at once which obviously you you is not ideal because if you're in the flow state or whatever you don't want to be having to stop for two seconds every so often for this canvas to update you just want to get to it and you don't want to risk the the chance of losing that inspiration so this isn't going to work and not to mention the fact that it's blocking the the canvas i'm working on and blocking my view so yeah the overview window is not going to work so my next idea let me clear this out 
My next idea was after a little research, I found that especially digital artists use this technique that I'm about to show you. Again, similar to the overview window, but you'll see that it actually updates in real time, uh, which is a lot better. So I'll show you guys that now. So to do that, you want to go up to settings and you want to configure Krita. Then you want to go to the general tab here and the window tab here. I think when you first download Krita, it's already set up to be uh, to be showing in tabs. But for this method, you want to switch it over to sub windows. And let's Yep, uh, you'll see that the project I was working on has been converted into a sub window. And let me press two should, yep. Two is going to fit the canvas to whatever sub window you have active. So the nice thing here again is that you can resize it to whatever you want. And additionally, you can go to window, new view, and open up that same project. If you have multiple projects open, you'll see them all listed here. Just open up the one that you're currently working on. So I'll click that one, which is the only one I have open. And you'll see that a new sub window was opened, which I can now resize. So you'll notice that it's no longer overlapping the way the overview, overview Docker was. And What's even nicer is that I can be working on this one. Let's say I'm drawing, I'm writing my name. And you'll see, you can see already that it's literally this, the moment I write or draw or anything on here, it's automatically being updated on this window. And the extra benefit is that if I zoom in or rotate or whatever, notice that this this window, the sub window, isn't being affected by those movements. So it will update in real time, but it won't show those movements, like I said. So now the only issue with this is that this is still a really small section of my whole screen. And in post editing, I would have to crop down just to the size of the canvas, which would reduce the quality of the video by a lot. So that's not ideal. And at this point I was thinking it would be really nice to be able to just have this in a completely, have this sub window in a completely se separate screen because I've been having uh, a second laptop. It was my old laptop. It's just been lying around. So I was thinking, It'd be perfect if I could just use it as an extended display, drag this window over there, record that entire screen, and then that way, whenever I crop down to the size of the canvas, it wouldn't really affect the quality all that much. So let me show you guys how to extend the display. And this is especially nice if you're using two laptops because according to my research, it's not always possible to do it through a wired connection. So this will set it up so that you can do it wirelessly. I'm not so sure if this works on a Mac, um, but if you're on a PC, it should definitely work. So the first thing you want to do is go to your second laptop and search for projection settings. I already set this up on my secondary display, so I'll show you guys on my primary display so you guys can see what it looks like if you haven't yet set it up. So let's look for projection, projection settings. And if you haven't already set it up, you're going to see this notification here that it's possible to, to add the wireless display feature by clicking this link here and then adding an additional feature by searching wireless. And then you would hit that, install this, and wait for it to load, and then you should be good to go. I'm not going to do it here on my primary display because I don't need it to be on, on here. Okay, so once you do that, what you'll see, now I'm on my secondary display, what you'll see 
is if you search projection settings again, now you'll have this link uh, which says launch the Connect app to project to this PC. And then it's going to say it's ready for you to connect wirelessly. So then you go to back to your primary display and you search again. Duplicate, duplicate or extend to a connected display. Then you want to scroll down and go to this accordion here, which says multiple displays and go to the very bottom of that accordion. You'll see connect to a wireless display and then you want to hit connect. And you'll see that my other laptop, which I've named Asus, is available to be connected to. So what you would do is you would hit that, whichever display you want to connect to. And when it zooms out like that, it, then you know that it's successfully connected. And the first time I, I connected to my secondary display, everything was fine, but then I closed everything out and tried to do it again. And for some reason that time, I noticed that the extended display only took up about a quarter of my second laptop. And so to fix that, if you guys run into that issue, just go back to display, the display settings. And this works for me. Where it says scale, I switched it over to 150, though probably any any other setting other than 100 would work. And then that enlarged the display on my secondary laptop. But obviously everything was zoomed in, so it wasn't ideal. So I went back to 100%, and this time it did take up the entire screen at the actual resolution. So hopefully if you guys run into that problem, this will fix it. But anyways, once you guys set all of that up, just go back to Krita. And actually normally you would see a little toolbar pop up here after you successfully project to your secondary display. That's a bit distracting. So the way to, uh, to get rid of it, if you have it, is there's a little like thumbtack icon that you would just click on and then it'll go away. If you hover within that area, it should slide back in. But anyways, for some reason I don't have it, so let's continue. Okay, so now we have the secondary display set up and we have the sub windows. So my next idea was to drag over that sub window into my secondary display. So I'll do that right now. But as you guys can see, the thing about sub windows, which I hadn't realized at first, is that they have to live in and be contained within this viewport. So you can't even slide it outside of the viewport, viewport much less a second screen. <laughs> so yeah, at that point at what I was stumped for a little bit, but then I played around with the settings some more and I found this option, which is something, like I said, that I don't think anyone else, else is doing. And it's really nice too, because you can actually still keep the tab configuration of Krita if that's something that you prefer, which I definitely prefer that. So I'm going to go back to that now. So go back to settings, configure Krita, window, and tabs. If you don't want to do this, you don't have to. You could, you could keep sub windows, but I prefer this. Okay. And let's... Yeah, let me close one of these windows or these tabs out because I don't need it. So what I figured out is that instead of opening, opening a sub window, you could actually open a whole new window entirely. So let's do that now. And once you do that, you're going to see that it's going to open Krita as if you're opening it for the first time that day. And you'll have all your projects here as usual. But the thing is, you don't want to open your project that you're working on 
from this menu. Instead, you want to go back to Window, New View, and just like before, select your the project that you want to be working on. So once you do that, you'll see, you can actually already tell that it's it's already linking to my other project. Let me do sub, uh, a split view so you guys can tell. It already linked to my other project without me even having to save it because my name is here. And I'll show you guys that if I'm working on this canvas, you can see that it's being automatically updated in this viewport. In real time, no lagging, and yeah, so that's amazing. And the really nice thing, which wasn't an option with the sub window, is that you can now drag one of these windows, whichever one you want to be recording, over to your secondary display. So let me do that now. And let me make it full size. So now we essentially have two full size projects open at the same time simultaneously that are linked to each other so that when you're working on one, the other one is being updated without also showing all of the zooming in and zooming out and stuff, which is really nice. But this is still kind of a small canvas. So my next mission, I guess, was to have that canvas be as large, large as possible. So in order to do that, what I recommend you guys do first is if you don't already have a short, shortcut, a keyboard shortcut um, to open up your rulers, you're gonna wanna set that up. And the way you do that is you go to settings, you go to configure Krita, keyboard shortcuts, search for rulers and you want to be typing everything on your primary um, computer and <clears throat> I already set my shortcut but what you would do if you haven't is just click here click custom and then type your shortcut and obviously hit save or okay and you should be good to go and I'll show you guys the reason for that soon okay so once you do that <clears throat> The next step is you could either go to view and show canvas only, or you could, as you could tell here, just hit escape on the keyboard, again, on your primary keyboard, which is a huge difference in size. But you'll notice that we still have this bar up here, this bar here with the name of the project and your taskbar. So in order to get rid of that, you could hit Control Shift F, which is going to get you guys into full screen mode and get rid of that top bar and actually also that taskbar. So this is pretty much using all the screen on your secondary display, which is really cool because that's really not going to affect your quality much at all if you crop down to remove this this bar with the name of the project, with, which I haven't really figured out how to get rid of without post editing. The reason I wanted you guys to set up a shortcut for showing the rulers is because for some reason when you're in full canvas mode the escape key no longer works unless you bring up the rulers with with whatever shortcut you decided to use you click on the rulers and then you hit escape and then you should be able to come out of full canvas mode and if if you no longer want the rulers, just hit your shortcut again and it'll get rid, rid of the rulers. So I actually forgot to <laughs> film almost the most important part of this process, which is the actual recording of the second display. And the way you want to do that, or at least the way I do it, is using OBS Studio, which I already have opened up. And it's really simple. Basically, if you have nothing set up, you want to go down here to the plus sign, click it, 
and hit display capture name it whatever your second you want to name your secondary display let's say ace s2 since i already have basis one this is just an example hit ok then this window is going to pop up and in the drop down menu you want to if if i were displaying to a secondary display it have an option display two and you would want to select that hit ok and if for some reason it adds it all the way on the bottom you would just want to drag it all the way to the top so that it's the thing that you're actually recording on obs studio so that's it if you guys made it up to this point of the video thank you so much for watching it means a lot to me and like I said, I think this is this could be a really valuable addition to your guys' process in terms of showing other people what you're doing and marketing yourself. And I think it could be implemented in a lot of different cool ways. And if you guys figure something out that I haven't figured out already in terms of different tweaks to the process itself or how to implement it um, for your marketing and stuff, please let me know in the comments or let me know if you like the video in general. And also make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you want to. It lets, it lets me know that you guys are enjoying the content I'm, I'm making. And I really appreciate all the support as, that I can get, especially as a new channel. And also, I promise that next week I definitely will talk about surrender, so make sure to tune back in and I'll see you guys next time.